Hey, Vampers Georgia, back in the man kit at last. Getting ideas together for some videos on projects I want to do. And I thought I'd share them with you. While I was doing that, I came across this guy. <laughs> was sitting in my drawer on here. Forgot I had it. It's time to put it to use. Let's check it out. Like I said, I got this a while ago. Basically, it's a knife blank. I can't even remember where I got it. I tried to find it. Couldn't find out where I ordered it from. <laughs> but there it is here. And you can see it's stainless steel. That's all I know about it. It's a pretty basic knife. It has my favorite blade on it, which is probably why I bought it. It's a drop point. And it comes to a really, really nice point on it there. It's nice and clean. It seems well made. How good the steel is, I have no idea. I can't even really tell you anything about it. I thought, you know what? I haven't made a fixed blade handle and sheath for a while. And I thought, hmm, maybe I should do that. So I've got to find some wood. Remember this guy? This is my old whittling roll bag that I used to keep all my whittling gizmos and stuff in it that I carried with me all the time and in my pack. Where's my pack? Hold on. Okay. All is good in the universe again. <laughs> here it is here. This is my walk around pack. You've probably seen me use it quite a lot. I do like to carry this on my walkabouts. It's a great size and it works well for what I need it for when I'm just doing a quick walkabout. I always carry a whittling kit in it. You probably saw the video where I replaced this with a Roaring Fire roll tool bag. I really like that. It works really well and I'm very pleased with it. This guy was still, I've had this for years. A stamp on it here. Yeah? Rustic Town is where it came from. This is really nice leather. It's thick, strong, sturdy, and it's really worn well and I like the look of it. Can't just throw this away. That's not gonna happen. So, I'm thinking traditional sheath for this guy. So, got to come up with a handle and then we'll come up with a sheath. I wanted, you know, like a traditional, I'm thinking and I'm not sure what you would call it. I refer to it as fixed blade Boy Scout style camp knife. I'll make a handle that's kind of Boy Scout stylish. It's not going to have the back on it. It's already got this on it. So I'm just going to make a handle that's going to go on here and show its full tang and everything. We might do some things to it. So that's the first thing we've got to do is this to make the sheath. Let's have at it. Okay, we're in the South 40 man cave. We did a little chilly and yeah, it actually snowed. We got about, I would say five inches of snow yesterday. And I thought, what? Walk about in the snow tomorrow. Got everything ready for it? Not so much. It all turned to rain. Walked outside this morning and it was like walking in a mud puddle. So that video went out the window. So here we are. Now I've got to find a piece of wood to make this handle with. Rummaged around in the pieces of wood I had back then. I came up with three pieces. And I'm stuck again. I don't know which one to use. All right, so here we are. This is walnut. I really like this. This was a stick I found trudging around. I think I found this when I went trudging with Lee. And then there's this piece. It's from a, uh, a shovel handle or something like that. And it's uh, American ash, hard, strong wood. Thinking this might be the way to go. We've got to make sure it's going to be big enough to make a handle for this guy. Because we've got that deep belly here. We'd be good. Fortunately, it gets thick and then goes thin. It's, it's a nice solid wood. And, you know, if I'm going to put a handle on a camp knife, that's going to take some abuse and that sort of thing. I need some good wood. And I think this ash, it's hardwood. It'll work. So let's cut it all up to size and everything and start working on it. You can see it says shovel handle. Nine and a half inch tapered with slot American ash. So we're going to give us some extra here to play with. Cut it off there. 
slid it in half, put it onto here, file it all up and we might add extras. Okay, I'm working on the handle right now. I was originally, as you saw, I started off talking through the video. I think what I'm going to do is just work on it and then I'll do a, vo a voiceover for the rest of it. So hopefully that works for you. Let me know in the comments what you prefer. So I cut the wood up and uh, I'm just getting everything to a rough size so that it's big enough to fit. I decided to use some uh, of the darker wood and then put leather in between. Uh, it just was kind of matching what I was thinking and what I was trying to make. Here I'm just uh, gluing the leather together. I just used a couple of strips and I put some of that uh, plastic. I just thought that that would help in forming it and give it a little bit of color to the handle. Uh, you can see the two pieces of wood at the end and uh, I wanted to make sure that it's <laughs> actually gonna fit the, the knife blade. So I glued it all together and uh, I used the Gorilla Glue five times. <laughs> and it was holding together and everything and then when I was working on it, it kept coming apart one side. I, I was really stuck. Here you can see I've cut it. I'm marking the inside because I got to set the, the wood to match the handle. Decided I was going to use pins uh, to hold the handle together. I wasn't really happy with the glue. And here you can see uh, the rough shape on there. It took a long time. <laughs> I was getting cold, had to have coffee. Life without coffee, no life at all. So here I'm just trimming out inside each piece of the handle. Uh, here you can see this. I didn't show you all the attempts. This is number six. Hopefully this worked. I used JB Weld Clear and I put some uh, magic dust up the top here to fill in the gaps that I had on the knife, hopefully, and the handle will stay together. What do they say? Six time lucky, right? Let's have at it. So I got my, I found out, somebody told me that JB Weld actually has a clear setup. Huh. Found that, back put it on, filing. back at it, filing. And it actually held. Uh, it looked a lot better, it held better. So we were back at it filing. All the time I'm filing, I'm just waiting for it to come apart again. For some reason, it just, when I say come apart, it wouldn't stick to the blank. I don't know why. It was only on one side and I couldn't figure it out. So here you can see I'm starting to shape the handle, went through the file, then to sandpaper. He has 80 grit. And then to a lighter sandpaper. And just getting as close as I can. After two hours of grinding, sanding and whatever, the handle is still together, <laughs> which is a plus. When, after putting it together and undoing it and putting it together, it kind of got a little crooked. And inside the handle, I had steel supports going across it to stop things from coming apart. Well, on this one, it was so far off, it came up. Not sure how to get rid of that. And, you know, there's a couple of little spots like that. The rough shaping is done. There you have it there. Uh, feels pretty good. The other thing is these leather pieces, as much as I squeeze them together, they still have movement in them. And if you look, 
You see how they're raised? No matter how much I, I uh, sand them, grind them, whatever, they still get fluffy. Clean it up, so we've got to give that a go. And then once we have all that done, then it's the, uh, the final cleaning, the really fine sandpaper and cleaning up and just making it look nice and smooth and clean and get rid of the scratches on here. So I'm, yeah, I'm using my magic dust thing that I do, sandpaper filings, mix it so with Elmer's. So now we wait. This will work. Need to get on with this. Um, I can't even start the sheath on it because I need the knife to measure and fit the sheath. Okay, so here it is, is here. You know, the glue is hard enough now, but while I'm waiting for it to dry completely, and here comes the boss. Inspection time again. Surprise inspections. Never know when that's going to happen. This is the leather that I want to use. It's pretty thick leather, solid as anything, and it's pretty flexible. It's an old tool roll that I've had for years and years that I replaced. So I'm thinking this would be good leather, nice and beat up. It's got some character. I'll have to clean up the leather, but I want to try it first. I have an idea of what I want to do, so I'm going to do that right now. So here I'm just drawing out the basic idea of what I'm looking for. I wanted a square shaped sheath. I wanted it to look kind of old school. Uh, this is the insert. Uh, you do this and you add it to the sheath and this protects your stitching and the leather when you're sliding a sharp knife in and out. It's not going to cut into the stitching and that sort of thing. It just is a barrier. But you have to shape it and get it to sit in there where you want the knife to sit when it slides in. Yeah, you can see what I mean. It's just an extra piece and the blade sits in there. Here I'm just going to glue it in. I I got totally out of sequence here. This is where I started to struggle with stuff. I was so busy thinking of certain things. Here when you glue leather together, you want to scrape it up and, and put this glue on. This glue dries almost immediately. It's uh, like a rubber glue. Here you can see it's in there. And you can see it has the extra piece in there that's going to protect with the blade line if it slides in. Now I want to shape the sheath to the knife. I just want to get a basic shape. So to do that, if you soak the, the leather, and the trick here is to leave it to soak, the leather will bubble. When it stops bubbling, it's nice and soaked. You can put it in. And then leather shrinks when it dries. So if you hold it all in place, here you can see it's dried. And it's kind of sort of got the shape. The reason I struggled with this leather is it has been processed. Obviously, when they made the tools, the tool roll for it. So it wasn't as easy to work with as I thought it would be. Here I'm putting on a, a die. Uh, even this uh, didn't soak that well into it. Uh, you'll see later when the dye dries. But it did come out better than I thought it would. Here I'm using my pizza cutter. To yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I glued everything together and I forgot to put the belt strap on. Uh, fortunately, I hadn't stitched or anything yet and I just had it glued so I could pull it apart and stitch it in there and yeah you can see I just pulled it apart not all the way just enough to work on it now I'm marking the stitch lines and I decided I wanted a, 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 a little ring on the bottom because I was going to put a little dangly piece on it and I'm just using my awl here, this pointy thing, just to mark the leather.
and there I finally got it on and stitched up. I must admit my stitching is getting better. Practice makes perfect, I suppose. And here you can see what I was looking for, the design. Needs to be cleaned up. Mary, hey, girl, what do you think? You didn't say anything, you just walked straight by. What do you think? Do you smell this? Hey. Uh, you think it's going to be okay? I don't know. This lid is giving me a hard time. Uh, the boss is tired. We just got a mail call, so shipping and receiving is checking packages. While we do that, we'll work on this. So here I'm going to put the hole in. Now, this turned out to be another challenge. Because I had basically three pieces of leather, uh, you know, stitched together, um, the ring is not very deep. I really struggled to get that in. Here I'm marking again. Uh, I love this tool. I should use it more. It's a good way to line and mark. This is my cut line. And here you can see I'm just cutting through it. This was not easy to do because it was so thick and I had a, you know, that small little knife. There was a new blade, by the way. It really struggled, even with a new blade. Here I'm just trimming off the edges, rounding things up and that sort of thing. This video would have been an hour long. There was almost four hours of video. I had to really pick and choose to try and keep the video at a decent length. Here I'm using that uh, gum again. I really like this. It really finishes the leather nicely. You put it on there, let it sit a couple of minutes and then rub it in. Now I'm using Prime Neat's foot. Keeps the leather in good condition. I use this on all my leather sheaths. Once a year, I just give them a pasting. It stops the leather from cracking and that sort of thing. But once again, it was really hard to get it in. Here's the the basic sheath. It's basically finished here. Put the little dangler at the bottom. The knife. I did put acrylic on the handle of the knife. Just a couple of very light layers of uh, acrylic. The blade was sharp, but not really sharp. Uh, something I learned, when you have a ceramic rod, the steel builds up on it. And you can just use a regular pencil, pencil eraser and get all that dirt out of there and your rod's good again to go. A couple of swipes with the ceramic. Sharpened it up really nicely. I don't know what steel this is. And it was really easy to do this, and that concerns me. Obviously, it uh, doesn't have a, got a, a lot of good retention on it, but it's still a nice-looking blade. So there you are, campers. A story of disaster. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done a lot of projects, and some of them, they don't work out for whatever reason. But this project, all on me. <laughs> I made so many mistakes on this project. I don't know what to say. To be honest, I wasn't going to put the video out. It was a little embarrassed. <laughs> if you watch my channel, you know me. What you see is what you get. And hopefully you and me both will learn from my oopses. Here it is here. You can see there. The idea that I had for this, this is it. This was the idea. This type of sheath, the knife, and everything like that. And I started off great guns, and it was going well. And then, well, 
here are some of the things I did wrong. So many problems had with this guy. I had the idea in my head. I know what I was trying to do. It was a, a kind of a big project for me. It took me forever. Uh, the knife, you saw the problems I had. The handle, I had issues with the glue. The leather, I learned a lot on that. Uh, there's got to be a better way to do that. I did something different and used pins. I learned on that, put a lanyard hole in. Just the whole thing of putting it together, that there was one thing after the other. And of course, having to take the handle apart, put it back together five times, kind of damaged everything. So there's a lot of whoopses. Look at that. You can see them here. Uh, nothing I could do about that without having to start again. And I didn't have any wood. <laughs> I wanted to finish the project. I'm a, I'm a firm believer is finish what you start. Do you like this blade? Cannot remember for the life of me where I got this blank from. I believe it is a made in Pakistan, I think. See how thick that is. It's nice and thick and whatever. And it's sharp and pretty easy. I don't know how good the steel is. It's carbon. It was a good project. I, you know, I, I like these projects. I always feel I learn something. And trying to fix problems and adapt and that sort of thing is what I'm looking for. Then we have the sheath. This actually... Worked out the way I wanted to. The shape, this thing, having the hole. Well, I got everything I wanted on the sheath. The problem is doing it, I did it in the wrong order. And not only that, this hole should have been there. <laughs> Didn't pay attention. Uh, that's where the tip of the blade doesn't touch there, but it, that's where it is. And I wanted it there. Didn't pay attention there. The snap uh, had a problem before where I couldn't get it tight. Couldn't get this tight. So I really tried this time and now it's too tight. Well, it's not too tight. It's really tight, but it will stretch over time. The leather was that leather that I, I used from a tool roll. It has been specially treated. So anything I wanted to do with it was hit and miss. I wasn't worried about that. I kind of like the look. I wanted an old school camp knife, scout, beat up knife look. The other thing is, you probably noticed, I am right handed. Yeah. This is a left-hand sheath. So many things I didn't pay attention. I was so focused on other things and, and things like that, that this was a only thing I can say is that this was a great project for me to learn a lot of things. And one was pay attention. These mistakes are, you know, they're unforgivable. I, I can't believe I did that. The stitching, uh, my stitching is getting better. better. There you go. Uh, Filling in this, this, this extra pieces in here and stitching that was a challenge. I figured that out. You know, the piece that you have to put in here to save your leather. So many things I learned on this and it's kind of a disaster. But I got to practice this. I got to practice that. I got to practice stitching. So, you know, I'm a firm believer in making toys for Mary, allegedly. Um, so I thought it, it worked fine. I learned a lot. Although I, I'm not happy with the end result, I learned so much doing it, so I, I don't have a problem with that. I think that's what it's all about for me. I have a favorite saying. It goes like this. Nothing succeeds like persistence. And I can be pretty persistent. So I think, you know, keeping that in mind, I, you know, I learned from this. Now I must persist and try another project and, and implement all this that I learned. It's the whole idea of these videos is to share that with you. Hopefully you learn, I learn, everybody learns. So here we are. Let me put the knife in now without cutting Mary. It's not a toy. There we go. So there you can see it in there. Uh, you know, I like the idea, the sheath idea. I really like this idea for a sheath, a square look. And uh, hopefully, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you. She won't pitch up for days on videos. And now all she wants to do is sit in front of the camera and do this. You all be safe out there, especially with these sharp and shinies. You know, when you're doing these projects, you've got to be careful, especially when you get frustrated. Pay attention. Step away if you have to. This project took me forever. I got really frustrated with it. I had to leave it sometimes for a week or two. Come back and look at it. 
think about it. And I thought I was going great guns and once done, looked at it, left hand sheath, hole in the wrong position, too tight, messed up the handle. Other than that, things went well. <laughs> Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. Ah! Mary, play over there. What do you do? I, I, I do appreciate your support. And hopefully we all learn something on this video. I know it's a long video and you're never going to get that time back. I'm sorry. But hopefully we all learn something. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.